Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things with the February Sunshine and Smiles Paper Pumpkin. I am a little bit late in getting this filmed due to a very hectic schedule. So let's get her open. I didn't even get a chance to film while I was picking it up. This month's spot is Mango Melody. Our stamps are a kite, a frog, some flowers, a sun, you brighten my day, friends in any kind of weather, wishing you sunshine and smiles, and hello. Uh, this has an add-on. I have not had any time to check with, I'm not sure if the add-on is available. I seem to recall hearing that it was already sold out and it looks like it just has two dyes, uh, the frog and the floral element. And there is a coordinating suite. Oh, and then it talks about, does it tell me the coordinating seat? So, yes, rain or shine suite collection is what coordinates with it, which I do not have. I have the papers and I have the embossing folder, but I do not have the bundle. Uh, we have a 10th anniversary coming for next month for the March kit. You will get a free gift. And let's get the pieces out and take a peek at them. And then I will jump right into planning for alternatives. I do wish I had gotten this bundle. It is on my list, but it is not on the pre-order list, so I did not get it in time for this kit. I did have the opportunity to host my upline and some other crafters friends, uh, two from North Carolina and one from Tampa Bay. So thank you to Libby, Kathy, and Jane for coming and spending the weekend with me. And we crafted till we could craft no more. It was great fun. We've got some dots and raindrops, dimensionals and double-sided adhesive. I believe that there's the same, I see nine envelopes. We have a diorama die cut in a, like a smoky slate and I'm already thinking if this is one of the dies. I do own the diorama dies, so perhaps I will check into those and see if those would be a good added supply. Uh, though we did have nine of the same envelopes, I am seeing three, each of three different designs with uh, the diorama, square, and circle. And I love that they did the back side so that this opposite half can be cut. And then I'm going to flip it over because I saw we have rain, sun, or sky, rain, sky, and a rainbow on the inside. So you have a choice to make whether you want to use the check pattern or the inside pattern. Oh. And look at these cuties. So these are definitely to go with the Rain or Shine suite. And I have some die cut turtle, bunny, frog, and a duck. Some clouds, grass, and flowers. And we have many sheets of these. I do have a little bit of a squished corner here on the one, but it's not has not affected the grass 
And there are four sheets. Oh. I want to make sure that I am correct in saying four sheets. I'm going to revise that to three sheets. And then we have kites and some various handwritten labels, one sheet. And that is it. And then here's our instructions. I will not be doing the prescribed instructions for the kit. I will be going for all, all A2 card alternatives. And I will come back in a bit after I get everything cut out. I will be coming back with any supplies or ideas on prep that will help you in your creative journey with this kit. So stay tuned. All right, I'm ready with some supplies prep as well as added supplies. So first thing, I took the scrap negatives from popping out all the die cuts. These are the two shapes, and I thought that this set of shapes, all four quadrants, would make an interesting stenciling. So I've only done a little bit of the blue tape. It's on both sides, and I would recommend if you want to use each section of this, go ahead and mask off the whole rectangle. And then if you wanted to, and you wanted to focus on, say, just using these kites, you could go ahead and de-sticky, either use washi that you de-sticky on your clothes, or you could, this is way too sticky though, to have it be a temporary or removable if you just want to focus on one section of these quadrants. So there's that piece. And then I also, with the three different pieces, I masked off the clouds three different ways. I think ideally either the four up or the diagonal three up is perfect, and I've already masked them on both sides so that they are ready for me to use. And then this setup is not perfect. In fact, I need to take this. You'll see that this cloud has a different angle than these three, so I don't think this is the ideal. I just wanted to show you that you could. I need to peel back this portion, like so. And then I would actually add one final piece of blue tape so you don't get a line here if you sponge over the edge. So there's that bit. The green grassy pieces, I definitely think you should cut into smaller segments. I cut, this is a full piece, and I went ahead and cut this one I made, I made like a mound, and then a diagonal cut into three pieces. I still think you could probably make this one into two. Depending on how far you want to stretch your materials. I went ahead and trimmed down the fronts and backs of the cards. In I cut them down to four and a quarter or four inches by five and a quarter. I then pulled out my diorama dies. Here's what the dia diorama die set looks like, and the one that I picked is the smaller of the middle size. And then I will show you what I did with it. I went ahead and did balmy blue. In I, I actually did a diagonal and then a straight flat. And I wanted to show you that depending on how far you need to stretch these materials, you actually could create a very nicely layered card. This black, I mean black, the uh, smoky slate or gray granite, whichever color it is, could be trimmed down. I have not trimmed it down. I did trim down one of these to show you what it looks like all layered up. Trimmed down. I will get rid of the gray. 
but see the gray is yet a different cut. So you can actually intermingle the gray with the blue. Here is what it looks like layered up. And then I've already got some popped up pieces to just throw on really quickly. I have an anniversary card that I owe my mom. And so I have started, I've pulled the, this is now tipping over into the added supplies. I'm using old olive for the happy anniversary. So that's one of the extra colors, but I have all of my inks out. And then the stamp set that that happy anniversary comes from goes very nicely. I am looking for it. It is hiding somewhere. I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to go find it and I'll be right back. I am back. I have pulled Celebrating You, which actually has a whole bunch of very relevant spring to even into May. Happy Mother's Day. There's Happy Father's Day. And I have a fun, I have, I found uh, a couple of stampings of that because I just made a Father's Day card. I have a couple of them to make each year. So I wrote, there's, this is just a great stamp set. It's in the annual catalog and I pulled the Happy Easter and that Happy Anniversary fits perfectly in the rectangle with the three dashes. These are all hand-drawn looking labels that if you wanted to find a thicker, I would say that this is like a 0.5 marker. If you wanted to take either the Stampin' Up stamp and write marker black you could hand outline do some fish tails and round the edges with your scissors and make your own handwritten labels to coordinate with all of these hand drawn hand colored it's a watercolor wash look to me so in addition to this set i also pulled out daffodil daydream for easter blessings and happy Mother's Day again. I have the splatter out because I think I want to do some splatter technique. We will see if on my samples in the showcase at the end, if I get to that. And I did want to share with you, uh, there are some smaller die cuts that I recommend you take the dimensionals that you get. I would make it horizontal long and I would recommend that you cut them into segments, thin segments, so that you can then flip over. I saved popping up the floral element here until this part of the video came up. So I always carry with me, I have a box that has my supplies when I go to any card crafting classes or a crop. And I always have some full size. As well as ones cut down. So the ones on the ends here are very nice to... There, It's a full piece if you need a longer piece or you can just take and snip and make them small pieces like these, these inside ones. And then your corners are going to be squared off. So that's my thoughts on getting the most out of your dimensionals. I'm looking here to see if I am missing anything. And I think that is all that I had for now. So you can always add embossing folders to these. We have a lot of new fun embossing folders. Any of them will work. I have the metal plate out that would look nice. 
we have the gingham that you could use. There's the words, happy birthday, uh, painted texture. Any of these embossing folders could be used on the existing pre-cut fronts. The Mango Melody is a rectangle and the pink, which is hiding over here, is an oval. And here was my demo of what I made using the piece of grass that is the mound. I will take these flowers away. So I just made a little mound to go with the oval. And I had put the duck. He's not popped up yet. So these are pieces are really going, going to be utilized as many as you want. to stretch them or make your cards really heavy with a scene. It just is up to what you want to do with them. I also wanted to show you that on the happy anniversary here, the Mango Melody shows that the kite stamp that you get fits perfectly in the black and white line art. Also was curious and found that the Wishing You Sunshine and Smiles, this is also stamped using the Mango Melody, fits on the narrower, the fishtail as well as the one with the dots should both work. This is slightly skinnier, so you're, you're getting almost too thin, but I think it'll still work if you're careful. And there is the very long sentiment, friend friends in any kind of weather that also fits nicely in the very long one row. And then you brighten my day fits perfectly and was probably meant to go in the fishtail one. I was just curious with this one, two line stamp, if it would fit on the fishtail and it does, but it also would fit perfectly in that one. So that is all I've got for prep. Don't forget you have dots and rain raindrops. I thought that I would do a quick beginner stamping using the Mango Melody. I'm gonna grab black, because I think black would look very nice. And then I also do have the old olive sitting out. So we're going to set these two scenes aside. So my focus on this is using the parts of the cards as scenes. You get nine, which means you have a potential of 18 different cards, depending on how you mix and match you do have to choose with the nine cards total, whether you're going to use the inside or you're going to use the checkered side. And I'm gonna show them one last time. These are the three colors of the checkered sides in the entire background. You could cut these in diagonal and stretch them even more. And don't forget on the stamp set that you do get flowers and a frog. So these can be colored, colored with blends or stamp and write markers to extend even further the card bases. And what I hadn't done yet is looked at the Mango Melody watercolor and it is all the way through. In fact, it is so much through that you get even the inside of the front of the envelope. 
uh, which is not normal. So the way I cut these, I just take a trimmer right to the edge and just cut off the very edge. One of my uh, commenters years ago suggested that, and that works the best for me to break this into pieces. You get this long flap piece, you will have both the big back and the front, as well as the glued pieces you can use as little strips if you want. So the whole envelope is also usable. So let's do a quick stamp or two on white. And I was going to use this sun and do a very simple I should probably use I'm gonna just grab this piece of cardboard which I use to go through my I use two of them because this one's got some marks in it all right and I am using my own Mango Melody. I am going to ink up the sun. I'm going to grab the Sunshine and Smiles. It is dirty, so I'm going to clean it really quick. Oops, sorry, I hit. So I think that is a very cute, simple card and I did want to show you that you can frame it and you I can see and you can probably see that the, the white is a gray white versus the basic white but with the mango melody grid pattern it makes it so that it isn't as noticeable So, let's now turn this over and do another one. And, in fact, that's been goobered, so let's get a cleaner, fresh one. Okay, so I wanted to get the frog out. And... And you could color that in any way you want. You could go ahead and add this. I was just going to go ahead and add some scenes. I got the clouds pre-set up. There's another cloud. So the stamp set is very cute and offers another way to extend the kit. And again, you could do coloring any way you would like. You could use an aqua painter very lightly and get ink, um, put ink on a craft mat 
and color it in that way. Use the watercolors, use the colored pencils, which I have done lots of demos of. That is all I've got for this segment. I'm going to be doing some photography for the showcase and might possibly pop back in if something exciting comes up that I want to share with you, but I've already shown some mix and matching. Uh, talked about the extra supplies that I'm going to be doing, mostly scenes. I'm going to use this set for my spring slash Easter cards, which are coming up. So I will possibly, after I do the showcase, then come back in March and show you what my final cards that I made with this kit are so that you can be inspired to go very avid um, on your projects if you want to. And if I don't come back, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments on this video or over on my blog. And as always, thanks for watching.